Welcome to our subscription video. Welcome, Jeff. This month we have two coffees for you from Ethiopia. And uh, it's pretty good we have Casper here because Casper is actually the one from our company who travels to Ethiopia every year. Actually twice, uh, twice in the past year. year. Yeah. Um, we we kind of see the fortunate thing about Africa being a little bit closer to Denmark is that with Kenya and Ethiopia we are able to go twice a year. We don't lose like a whole two days on just traveling back and forth and jet lag and so on. So uh, Africa is uh, it's pretty nice. It's the neighborhood. Yeah. So two coffees for you this month. Um, the first one is this one, Halo, uh, aka Halo Biriti, in uh, in Yegachefe in yes. uh, Ethiopia. This and is the third year we're buying from from this wet mill or coffee factory as they call it. They both produce sun dried and washed coffees. Uh, Mitsat is a company owning the factory. They buy cherries from small farmers who they, they have like training, uh, they provide training for them so they can get better at uh, doing their farming techniques yeah. uh, throughout the year. And then they uh, can choose to sell the, the cherries to Metat or they can sell them to whoever they want. But Metat, uh, if the quality is, is right, normally gives like the highest price so they get all the good stuff. And Metat is a company that we uh, got introduced to, I think, is that three years ago? We got introduced five or six years ago, but yeah. it took us kind of like some years to, to... To figure it out. To figure it out, exactly. Yeah. But they are doing a fantastic job in terms of providing more value back to farmers, and especially as you mentioned, training, which is just paramount to getting really good coffees. Um, it's located in uh, Jägerchef, and Jägerchef is probably one of the most famous coffee regions in the world. Um, always known for these incredibly aromatic coffees, lots of uh, citrus. Mm. Um, what? So you you were the one who actually went down and shows out different coffees and brought back samples for us to cup, and then yeah. we cupped a lot of really nice coffees uh, together. But what do you think made the the Halo exceptional? What made it stand out? I mean, for me, the Jägerchef is just something special. The the bergamot and citrusy notes is just and, and the florals are very unique so it's just a very elegant coffee and for me there's nothing like it so yeah. so i mean and i think we all agree on yeah. that in the company it's, it's it's a coffee that we just really want to have in the menu it's actually been pretty impressive when we brought this coffee in the past couple of years to cuppings in you know in the united states or in england and it's been up against some really really expensive geishas and some people actually preferred this coffee over the geishas because it is so incredibly floral and the geisha is also uh, one of the old varieties from Ethiopia. Mm. So you can definitely tell that there's that sort of relationship in, uh, in aromatics. So really looking forward to, to drinking a lot of this in the coming months. Yeah. So that was a uh, halo or halo. I don't know how we pronounce it actually. Like, I, I bet, I mean, the locals say it different than we do. Let's just keep it halo. Yeah, <laughs> true. And then we have the second coffee here for you, which is called Buku. So this is from the na neighboring region, like from, from Gucci. So it's a bit more tropical fruit. It still has a lot of floral, some citrus, but it goes more into like some pineapple or peachy aromas. Do they do anything different in processing at these two uh, washing they stations? They get the exactly the same training. It's the same like farm setup or factory setup. So it's like everything is the same. Uh, so what you taste is really like the terroir. Yeah, the soil, the the climate, the, just yeah. those small differences between the, the areas. Yeah. So how does it work when they're buying cherries from different farmers? Do they do you just come in with cherries that they pick and then they buy them or do they... I mean, in these two areas, the, the farmers themselves, they will deliver the cherries to the factories. And then uh, Metap will go through them, see if the quality is there. And if it is, you get like the first payment. You also get a receipt and then they have a second payment later once the coffee sold so they can get the, the bonus there. The premium for based exactly. on the quality. Exactly. Excellent. Uh, how did you choose to roast these two coffees? I mean, always with Ethiopian coffees, you really want to apply as little to them as possible because, I mean, they're exceptional coffees. Uh, they got sweetness from nature. They got all the aromas. So we really just want to do it like fast and quite light to really highlight those acidics yeah. and uh, the more floral things. 
And you're also getting this either, we've shown the filter bags now, but your Espresso subscribers, of course, getting the Espresso version of this, yeah. which is slightly... It's a little slower. Uh, it's still a very light Espresso roast, but it's a little slower approach. So we just tone down the acidity a little bit so that it's a bit easier to work with for Espresso. Uh, so but you yeah. can expect some really uh, aromatic espressos out of these two coffees as well. Yeah, definitely. And we think it's quite fun to show two coffees from the same country, from neighboring regions, um, side by side. So you have a chance to taste all this talk about terroir. What does it actually mean? How does it come out in the cup? Um, please make sure you use really nice filtered water when you brew these coffees, because they are all about getting those aromatics out and mm. not hurting that fragile acidity that they have. Yeah. We hope you'll enjoy it. Thanks, Casper, uh, for telling a little bit about the of coffee. Course. It's a pleasure. See you next month. Yeah, bye.